Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have, everybody said, let them have. Dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Amen, amen. And everybody said amen. I'm going to continue talking to us tonight, part two, amen, about the three-dimensional process of dominion. The three-dimensional process of dominion. Everybody said praise the Lord. You want the Lord to talk to you today? Amen. God bless you. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Oh, thank God, thank God, thank God. I love you, Jesus. Praise God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Last Tuesday, we began to talk about the process of creation and how that God created this beautiful garden, beautiful variety that was in that garden God loves diversity. Red and yellow, black and white. God loves diversity. Can you say praise the Lord? Everybody has a chance to be saved in the kingdom of God. Amen. All the trees weren't just peach trees or pear trees. Amen. But God put variety. Everybody said variety is the spice of life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Brother Nino, aren't you thankful you didn't marry yourself? Praise God. Amen. Thank God for variety. Amen. So God, God creates this, this variety, and then God takes and from the dust of the earth, the only thing that he did not speak into existence but created from matter that was already created, Amen. He created man. It reminds me the story of the scientist who got in a, a, a building contest with God, challenged God, and said, uh, I think I can make things just as good as you can. And so God said, all right, I'll accept that challenge. And, and so they went out into the field, and God stooped down and picked up dirt and started making uh, a face and started shaping and, and the man's over there standing and he reaches down and he grabs him a handful of dirt and God said, oh, wait just a minute. You got to make your own dirt. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. So God created mankind in his image and we talked about the image of God being reflected in both the male and the female. Amen. And so uh, we, we get on down here to the job description of mankind in the garden. And it, it, it starts with this word that is such a misused word in American culture. And the reason why is because that man tries to do something that God did not tell him to do. God told him, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the, uh, the uh, uh, fish of the sea, fowl of the air, amen, and the cattle that's in the field over uh, every green herb. I've given that to you for meat. And, and, uh, but nowhere there do you find where God told Adam to have dominion over mankind. And the issue becomes when man tries to take dominion over other men. When man can I tell you something? That's where perversion gets started. 
Amen. And so God, God's very interested in this thing being done right. Everybody said right. I want to do it God's way. And so to, to, to understand dominion, dominion is the same word where we get dominate or uh, domineering, controlling, amen. And so when, when you begin to think and immediately some folks depending on uh, what kind of, of life that they've had to live. When you begin to talk about dominion, instantly it brings a bad connotation because of, of your perception of how you were treated by someone else. Can I tell you something? Don't allow the devil to twist godly principles just based off of your bad personal experience. Just because somebody failed in their reflection of being what God intended for them to be doesn't mean the, the principle's wrong. Like Pastor said uh, Sunday night, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Amen. We just have to come back into alignment with the principles of the Word of God. And when we get in alignment with the principles of the Word of God, how many believe that you'll get the blessing of God that goes right along with the principles of His Word? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in here tonight. Amen, amen. So, so dominion, it means to tread down. It means to prevail against, to take into control. And so there were three things here that God specifically spoke to them. And we dealt with the first one last Tuesday night. He talked about the fish uh, of the sea. And in my mind, when I look at this, I understand this to mean the hidden things, the deep things things, the, 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 the personal things. And we talked about the, the, the ability or the uh, mandate, rather, of, of the Lord in the arena of self-control. Everybody said self-control. The fish, I believe, represent the things that are inside of ourselves. They represent the ability for mankind to begin the process of taking dominion by taking control of himself his thought processes, his attitudes, and his character development. The fish often live below the surface in those deep and dark places where no one can see them with the naked eye. But God said, before you can have dominion over the scene, you must learn how to have dominion over the unseen. Can you say praise the Lord? And so men and women alike, we must learn to exercise the control of self and selfish behavior. We've got to learn how to control our tongues. We've got to learn how to control our thoughts. We've got to learn how to control the lusts of our flesh. Can I help us understand tonight? God, when he created you, he didn't create you to be some anemic, helpless creation that's just waiting on some higher power to help you out. Oh, yes, he's going to give you help when you ask for it. Uh, but can I tell you that just by mere nature that you you woke up this morning and you can fog a mirror means that you got breath in your body means that God's given you the inherent ability to take charge and take control uh, but it starts with you and I taking control of this old flesh uh, there comes a point in time when I've got to drag my flesh down to an altar you say you've got an alcohol problem I say you've got a self problem you don't have a cigarette problem you don't have a drug problem uh, you've got a self-control problem and when you get that self under control uh, and drag that flesh to an altar and crucify it, uh, like Paul said, I die daily. Uh, when I crucify my flesh, uh, then God says, okay, now I can trust you with power over the seen realm. Now I can trust you with power uh, over the spirit. Because God will never give you power over the spirit world until you are willing to take control over yourself. Hallelujah. So let's talk about the spirit world, the fowl of the air. So amazing that God's order of dominion starts with self-dominion first and then leads us to spiritual dominion. 
and in spiritual dominion, I, I can never expect to be able to command the spirit world and expect it to obey me and have authority there if I have no inner authority over myself. That's why the devil tries so hard to beat us at our own game. To beat us at our own, on our own level. Because he knows that if we win in the dimension of self-control, we'll walk into his domain and take authority over his domain as well as ours. And that scares him to death. And so now, now, now we have to understand Genesis chapter 15 tells a beautiful story, and I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but let me just hit the high points of it for the sake of time. Uh, Abraham here, God, God begins to give him promises, and God begins to give him uh, a, a prophetic uh, utterance that, that, that he would carry with him for the rest of his life. At the end of this, the Bible said that Abraham makes this sacrifice to the Lord. And something that just jumped out at me as I was studying this in, 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 in the aspect of, of dominion, the fowl of the air, it, it instantly jumped into my mind because the Bible said that as he makes a sacrifice and as he, as he prepares everything, the Bible said that the birds came and began to try to tear apart and pick apart his sacrifice. This is what the Lord kind of kind of just started dealing with me about. Our first sacrifice is the sacrifice of self. And so the spirit world knows that and it knows that once we lock in that sacrifice it 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 is a covenantal sacrifice. In other words, it is the sealing of the deal between you and God. And so the first thing he begins to do is he begins to come to your sacrifice and begins to pick it apart. Well, you're not worthy. And he takes a little bit of truth and mixes it with a whole lot of lie. And I'm not worthy, but he made me worthy. I, I can't. But Philippians tells me, but I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Oh, somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And so when the Bible says, when the enemy cometh in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise. See, see here's what has to happen. And I'm going to tell you something. I, I felt this since I've been here. When you go to pray, and we talked about it Sunday, and I, 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 my God, it has, been, it has just been eating at me and ministering to me. Prayer is the transference of trust. If you can't trust God with you, and the sacrifice of self. How are you going to have confidence in God to give you the authority over anything else? So doesn't it make sense that in order for God to work in your life, He'll start with you as an individual? He really does want to be your God, not your grandpappy's God, not your, not your daddy's God, not, not the generation, your God. He said, I will be their God, and they shall be. So do you believe that you belong to him? That, that's, that's where it comes down to. And that's where the buzzards comes and the birds come to try and 
pick apart your value your feeling of self because when God fills you with his spirit and God puts his hand upon you he begins to help you understand how valuable you are to him and when you understand your value to God that's what makes you invincible when it comes to attacking the forces of hell and so the very thing that the devil tries to come and do is tear apart your feelings of self-worth Because when he can strip you of anything that God get, God have mercy. The Bible said that he is a thief. He has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, but Jesus said, I've come uh, that you might have life uh, and that you might have it more abundantly. So when the buzzards come and the birds come, I'm going to tell you something. Ain't nothing going to get my praise. Ain't nothing going to get my sacrifice. There ain't, there ain't any depressive spirit. There isn't any ang anxious spirit, any anxiety that's going to, I refuse to allow some dirty black buzzard bird uh, from hell come and try to steal what belongs to God. It belongs to him. It's part of my covenant relationship with him and I'm interested uh, in God fulfilling his part of this bargain so bless your pea picking heart I'm going to do my part and I'm not going to let the devil steal my sacrifice oh hallelujah so the Bible said that Abraham drove the birds away sometimes sometimes you got the Bible said the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the y'all y'all don't y'all don't know that verse. And the violent take it. Oh, I thought we were supposed to love everybody. Kumbaya, my lord. Kumbaya. And the devil just sit there snickering and laughing at you. Sometimes you just got to get a little violent. Sometimes you got to make up in your mind, I am not leaving that altar until I walk out of here with total victory. I'm not leaving here until I... I'm getting my praise on tonight. Devil, you can't have this sacrifice. You can't have my health. You can't have my wealth. You can't have my prosperity. You can't have my Holy Ghost. Uh, you can't have my family. Uh, you can't have my breakthrough. Uh, I'm taking authority uh, because I've taken authority over myself. I have authority in the spirit world. Oh, hallelujah. Ah, my, 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 my. All right. And then, as we take authority in that realm, the fish, the fowl, everybody said the cows. Anytime throughout the Bible when description is made of a person of wealth, many times they were described as having much cattle. Cows were a source of blessing and sustenance. And, and so I believe that, that, that as we look at this pattern of creation, again, I said it uh, uh, last week, I'll say it again, I really believe you can take the first chapter of your Bible and, and preach everything from Genesis to Revelation because the pattern is there. The pattern all the way from, from, from the new birth, Calvary, everything. You get it in the first chapter of the book of Genesis. And, and, and so when we begin to understand this principle of, of dominion, both, both personal, spiritual, but then we get into this, this spiritual uh, aspect and, and we take dominion there, and then we get into the, 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 the maybe more physical aspect of dominion. And this is where a lot of people get hung up. Because after all, don't you know Jesus was just a poor, humble, little beggar man walking the earth, barely getting from 
point A to point Z. The Son of Man had nowhere to lay his head after all. What you have to understand was that when Jesus Christ began, you want to know what makes the call of the disciples so powerful? Brother Bill, these men were not poor little fishermen. In fact, if you were to go to the community where Peter lived, his house has been found, and it is the largest home in that community. Peter was a wealthy, wealthy man. James and John, the sons of thunder, these men, these men were not poor men. Matthew, the tax collector, he was not a broke man. He maybe didn't get his money right, but he wasn't broke. Everybody else might have been broke, but he wasn't broke. You ever seen a tax collector broke? I think so. <laughs> IRS ain't broke. So, so, so when you understand that, that all of a sudden it changes the mindset of in order to live for God, I'm just going to be broke, busted, and disgusted. No, 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 no. It starts with you taking dominion here, then there, then here. And yet, the devil will do everything he can to try and captivate your mind and your heart into this. Well, you know, God's going to take care of me. Oh, yeah, he will. And he'll do a good job if you'll let him. The issue is, is God's all about divine order. Everybody said order. What does God do in, the, in, 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 in Genesis 1 and 1? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And I tell you something, uh, it is the will of God uh, for the Spirit of God when you have dominion of here uh, and you have dominion in your prayer life uh, and you have dominion in your daily walk with God. Uh, it's God's will for you to walk on your job uh, and have dominion on your job. Uh, it's the will of God for you to have dominion in your finance. Uh, it's the will of God for our men uh, to be self-employed uh, and have good jobs with good income. Uh, it's the will of God uh, for us to be able to come to the house of God uh, and so into missions uh, and so into the world, uh, into the gospel being preached, uh, for the building to be finished, uh, for new buildings to be built, new campuses to be started. Uh, I'm telling you, it's going to come out of your pocketbook. Uh, it's going to come out of the blessing of God as you take dominion. Take dominion. This isn't name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. This is God's order for dominion. Amen. I, 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 could, I could get off here on, on the subject of, and, and I'm going I'm to bump this just a minute because I'm, I'm the evangelist, so it's easy for me to preach. Hallelujah. Everybody said tithing. The Bible said, bring you therefore all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord, if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Okay? Now, the first thought in my mind or in your mind might be, well, that's a cow issue. When in reality, tithing is not a cow issue. Tithing's a flesh issue. Tithing's a fish issue. Because when you understand that that first, not, not, not the 10% after you done paid your bills. One, one, one old elder told, told a meeting where I was in, he said, he said, them bills, you made them, you pay them. God said, give me the first tenth. Now, here's, here's why that's so, so valuable. 
tithing, and, 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 and your pastor and I talked about this uh, just briefly, but tithing is not you paying the preacher. You couldn't pay him for his value. You can't pay me for my value. We couldn't pay you for yours. Money, money, or the amount or lack thereof has nothing to do with your intrinsic value. That's the reason why when you come into the house of God, I don't care if they come in here in holy jeans uh, and look like they've been pulled out from underneath a, a bridge uh, and they pull up next to somebody that's got a nice suit of clothes on. God don't look at the exterior. He looks at the heart of the matter. Okay? So, but what tithing does is tithing says, God, you've given me the strength to make it. This hundred percent, whatever that is. Now I'm going to make you Lord of everything I have by giving you the tenth. Your pastor made a statement, and he's probably talked to you maybe about it, but but it it, it just it triggered something in my mind when he made the statement about the tenth, the ten being the highest numerical value. It's the whole. You start back over at one. Zero. One, two, three, four. Right? Okay. So when you, when you give that to God and say, God, I'm honoring you first and foremost, God says, okay, let me don't show you, you can do more with a blessed 90% than you could with a cursed 100 I'm living proof of that. I've got, I've got things that I shouldn't have on, on, on the budget that I live on, but yet the blessing of the Lord, the Bible said, maketh rich, uh, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Uh, when you take control and you are a giver, everybody said a giver. The Bible said it is more blessed to than it is to but yet he said, if you'll give, you'll what? You can't, you can't lose. You can't lose with the stuff we use. <laughs> Amen. It's the will of God for you to be blessed. It's the will of God for you to be prosperous. But I want to tell you something. Listen now. Uh, was it was it was it was it John wrote, I believe to second or third John, beloved, I would that thou prosper and be in health even as thy dominion. Hallelujah. So God will prosper you. Let, let, let's look at this. Let's look at this. There's, there's some very interesting things. Jesus, when, when, when his earthly ministry, he was provided for by people who gave to him of their substance. Luke 8 and verse number 3. I, I believe I gave that to you. Amen. Uh, Luke 8 and 3. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod Stewart, and Susanna, and many Others ministered unto him of their substance. Paul spoke of the ministries of those who had both abandoned and supported him. Second Timothy chapter one, verse number fifteen. This no, uh, uh, this thou knowest that all they. Uh, which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Aphelagus and Hermogenes. The Lord have mercy on the house of Onef uh, no, Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day and in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus thou knowest very well. These are, these are people that God gave they took dominion and then God turned around and used them to minister and be a blessing to the ministry 
for the furtherance of the gospel. Paul gives his words of appreciation to Epaphroditus. Philippians chapter 2, verse 25. Yet I suppose it necessary to send unto you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger, and that he ministered to my... And then he ministered to my... It'd be a good idea for some of you to find out what your pastor and pastor's wife, just what they want. You want a blessing, bless the man of God. You want to get cursed, curse the man of God. And it's the truth. It's, it's not, this isn't a get rich quick scheme. God honors the law of sowing and reaping. The Bible said, he that soweth sparingly, he's going to reap sparingly. But he that soweth bountifully, he's going to reap bountifully. Do you believe the Word of God? I believe the Word of God. I, and, and, and hear me. I'm not just preaching this because I'm a, I'm a preacher. I've lived this. I watched my family. I watched my father. When he and my mom got married. They, they made a commitment to the Lord. Pastor, you can come. Music. I'll fix the clothes. They made a commitment to the Lord. The two of them. We're going to pay not 10%, not 15%. But we're going to give 20% of everything that God gives us. We're going to give it back to God. Now, this, my dad's a pastor, okay? He, he's a full-time pastor. But in his own heart, in his own life. I left home when I was 20 years old. And never one time, Brother Bill, ever saw the cupboards empty. I never one time had to wonder where our next meal was going to come from. Brother Nino, I, 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 watched, I watched the town drunk roll up into my parents' driveway. And he was drunker than Cooter Brown. But he had just picked him up. A, 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 I, remember, I still remember that old, that old multicolored, I don't know if it was a Ford or a Chevy, but my God, that thing was so old, they must have rolled it off Noah's Ark. Let's stand. And I remember hearing out of my own ears as a kid, old Percy Wagner, Pastor Mira, I got you some potatoes and some squash and literally Sister McKinney, he, he, he would go and he drug two 50-pound bags of potatoes. Here, boy, take these to the cellar. I looked at Dad and I'm going, <laughs> we still got one left from the last time this cat was here. Dad said, take it to the cellar. And I come up just in time to hear him make the statement to my father. Pastor, you know why I do this? He said, it ain't for you. At least he's being honest. He said, but every time I come by here and pay my tithes before I go sell this produce, he said, I end up selling out faster than I do if I don't. I'm doing this for me, not you. But he learned the principle. I don't care if it's a drunk. I don't care if it's saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and a mighty burning fire. The principle works. The principle works. I believe it's the will of God for this church to be finished, be completed. And there's, there's, there's men and women in this building tonight that you're going to write the checks. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to happen but it's going to start with you taking dominion. Over here, taking dominion over the spirit world that's trying to crush you and rule you. And then you begin to take dominion and put God first. 
in everything that you do and you watch the blessing of God unload into your spirit. You're going to be able to bring missionaries through here and send them out with ten, fifteen, or twenty thousand dollars in one offering. Oh yeah, that that's going to happen in this church. God's going to give you the ability as the church. You say, well, brother, man, there ain't very many of us here. I don't, the Bible said that the Lord saveth not by many or by few. So quit looking around at who's not here and look at who is here. Get you a mirror, get you a pocket mirror, hold it up to yourself and say, hey, that joker's talking to me. It's talking to me. I can do this. I can be blessed to the Lord. I can prosper in the presence of God. How many won't be blessed to the Lord? Would you lift your hands and let's just worship the Lord? Would you let the seed of the Word of God find good ground in your spirit right now? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, would you help us? Uh, you're willing to entrust people who know how to control uh, the fish and the fowl. Uh, God, you're going to dump un unending un loads of blessing uh, God but it's going to start with the physical and then move into the spiritual back into the financial uh, God I believe it's your will for this church to be blessed uh, I believe it's the will of God for these precious people to be blessed uh, I believe it's the will of God for them to bless their man of God uh, Father I'm asking that a spirit of revelation and understanding uh, Lord would saturate this word uh, Lord Jesus let us get it down in our hearts and in our spirits uh, in the name of Jesus would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise hallelujah 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 God will multiply and grow the substance of any person who is willing to take dominion remember this when God blesses you I've seen some folks my God, they could pay tithes on their unemployment check, but the moment they started making them, them, them $10,000 a month checks, it just seemed like, you know, they might have been making $150 a week, and then they went to making five and $6,000 a week. It was easy to pay that $15, but, man, they got to look at, man, that, that that preacher's going to get $600 of my money? Oh, yeah, you forget I'm a preacher's kid. I've seen it all. That's carnal thinking. That's fish that's not under control. That's fish that's not under control. You need to catch them suckers and fry them. Because when you do, and you take dominion, the blessing of God. What did the Bible say? Try me. Try me. And see. And I'm going to open up a window. Has God ever lied to you? Guess what? He ain't going to start now. I said he's not going to start now. If you'll learn, young people, if you'll learn, listen to me. I learned this principle. Story. Is that okay? I'm going to shut up. I was about three, four, five, about, about four or five right in there. My father set me down at the kitchen table and said, I, son, I want to, I want to take and I want to, I want to teach you something. And he got my piggy bank. Well, when you got my piggy bank, honey, you had my attention. You hear me? You had my attention. And he, and he took my piggy bank and he put it out. And he, he got ten of these, 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 these little copper-looking things here. And he put, put ten of them. I don't have ten of them, but he put ten of them out there. And he said, now, son... He read me the scripture and he said, now, so let's have a math. I'm four years old. What do I know about math? 
he had enough faith in the principle that he was going to instill it in my heart before the devil got a chance to put anything else there. Some of y'all could take a lesson from that. And so he explained it to me, and I, he said, now, now, how much of this belongs to God? And, and so I took that, and I pulled that off to the side right there. I said, that, Dad. I said, okay. He said, now, and he had a little tithing envelope there, and he said, I don't know why I'm on the tithing thing, but anyway, that's what I feel in the Holy Ghost. So, so, so then he said, okay, how much you won't give for offering? I said, well, it's only a penny, so I'll take that. He said, okay. He said, now, he said, well, I'll give to missions. He said, how, what do you want to do? I said, well, I'll take another one right here. And, and I was, I'm four years old, y'all. I'm literally, this is coming out of my heart. Seeds that my parents planted there. I pulled that penny off right here. Put that right there. My mom, that next weekend, got an envelope with three cents in it. Penny for Jesus, a penny for offering, and a penny for the missionaries. I say, well, what what's, what's pennies do? Dad's right in the middle of writing that envelope out, and the telephone rings. He's off answering the telephone, and. We had a, a bar right here, and, and, and the telephone was here, and all had some china and stuff up here. But right here was an opening for a dishwasher. My mom never had a dishwasher. She said, God gave me four of them, so I don't need any more. I was the oldest dishwasher, praise God, just in case she's wondering. I, yeah, I got dishpan hands, so what? So... In this was a, a curtain come across here, and there was a cooler in there that I would jump up on, grab a hold so I could be Mr. Nosy and listen to the conversation. Well, I still remember it was an old tan, uh, uh, cream-colored cooler with a brown lid on it. And it had a bevel on one side. So, so that bevel was pointed out towards me. And so I, my little toe-headed self jumps up there and I pull myself up. Well, guess what? That thing rocked out from underneath of me. And the edge of where that opening was for that dishwasher, it was milled laminate with formica on top of it, razor. You could run your finger over it and just about slice your finger. And my forehead hit that corner. Now, you have to understand something. Just a year before, I, I still had the scar where I busted my head wide open, falling on cement. So, Dad and I have already been through this scenario before, okay? He's on the telephone talking to the sound man from the church. And, and, and you know, here goes Seth. What? In his mind, he's remembering a year ago, and he knows when he picks me up, he's fixing to see blood. and, and go. He wasn't going to see any brains, but, you know, it's a nice thought. He picks me up. He hangs up the phone, picks me up takes me in the living room. I remember Brother Bill laying on the couch in his arms as he's frantically going through my hair. And this is what the statements he was making. I can't find anything. I can't find anything. Son, where does it hurt? Where does it hurt? And, and, and he's feeling all over my head. Where does it hurt? Where does it hurt? He said, I went through that boy's head. I couldn't find so much as a red mark. So you best believe I believe in giving God what belongs to him, and I do it without complaint. Because I know if it had not, there is no insurance that can take care of you like what Jesus can take care of. Hey. So, take dominion. It belongs to you. Let me, let me, let me say this. 
You don't have to take what's already yours. You just got to exercise it. God's already given it to you. Walk in authority. This week, make up in your mind this week, God, I'm going to a new level. God, I'm going to a different dimension in you. I'm going to take authority over everything that's tried to bind and captivate my mind and spirit. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, would you lift your hands uh, and just give God a shout of praise. Uh, I love you.